This is Just Tool Basics, and today we're talking about multimeters again. Hello everyone, welcome to Just Tool Basics. Today's topic is multimeters, again. We've talked about multimeters in the past, um, but been focused more on kind of basic functionality, some of the accessories that you can get for multimeters, and how to use a multimeter around the house uh, to check outlet voltage and things like that. I'll link those videos down in the description. But today we're going to focus on automotive stuff, ba basic automotive stuff. So checking the voltage of your battery and then checking the voltage of the alternator, um, which can tell you if the alternator is charging the battery and or if the battery has some basic voltage issues. Now that doesn't tell you everything. You would need to apply load to confirm that a battery is healthy. Um, I'll show that in a future video, so I'll link that below once that video exists. If you're watching this video early after its release, that link won't be down there because I haven't recorded it yet. But uh, we're going to use this multimeter. It is a little bit different than the yellow fluke one that I've shown in previous videos, which is high precision. I, I use it for like electronics and things and, and around the house uh, electrical stuff. Uh, and I've also shown like the Harbor Freight um, cheap red one. Now, either of those would work fine in this case. Um, this is my automotive multimeter, or one of them, that uh, has a few extra car specific or automotive specific functions, but that won't matter. Um, you could use any of those multimeters, any basic multimeter will get the job done because all we're going to be using is the DC voltage setting. Um, and that is all we'll need to uh, do this test. So I will uh, meet you outside and show you what we're going to show you. So here we are looking under the hood of my 2005 Range Rover. Just going to set the multimeter to DC voltage and prop it up so you can see it. Now this car, like a lot of modern cars, kind of doesn't want you messing with the battery directly. So it has the positive uh, extended out to a little box. You can see the red tape there showing that it's positive. And that little cover is just flipped down. You normally leave it closed just so nothing accidentally touches it. Now I'm using a chip clip here, which is a nice non-conductive spring-loaded thing to hold the tip of the probe against the two lugs. Now you could, of course, use the alligator clips as I've showed in previous videos to do this. Um, the chip clips do a good job and are non-conductive and are cheap, and you probably have one, and it gets the job done. Um, so you can see that the voltage is reading at 12 and change volts, and that is perfectly good. And now I'm going to start the car up. You'll see in this car it's a little curious that the voltage won't jump up right away, um, you see it drop from hitting the starter, but then the voltage will sit around 12 volts until the computer decides it's time to send the voltage um, to the battery, and then it spikes way up to about 14 volts. Um, it'll keep creeping up a little bit here, and then we'll settle down just over 14 volts, which is a pretty typical output for a alternator. Now, you can see when I rev the motor that the voltage should not change significantly. It, it's just, it should stay relatively steady. Uh, if your voltage swings wildly with RPMs, that's an indicator that your diodes are blown out or, or otherwise messed up and not what you want. Um, once the car's turned off, of course, the voltage drops back down to 12 and change volts and that's where it sits. So this is my old GMC truck. Uh, once again, flipping to DC voltage. Now, these are kind of a traditional crimped lug batteries right there thing. So I'm just going to stab these probes into the <laughs> behind the, the ferrules that are, are crimped or the, the terminals that are crimped onto the battery cables. Now, again, if you have the alligator clip uh, accessories for your volt, your multimeter, those would be a little bit more convenient. You can clip them onto the battery terminals like normal. Now, Starting this car, you can see that there's no delay, there's no computer, so it's just immediately is the alternator outputting or not, and we can see that it is. And it, you know, settles around just over 14 volts again, similar to the considerably more modern car by, I don't know, 50 years or so. Um, 
you can see again though when we rev the motor or if I'm revving the motor here the voltage should not change significantly um, again if it's fluctuating wildly that shows that something is wrong with the alternator um, typically in the, in the control diodes but as you can see you know old car new car they they basically work the same the alternator charges at 14 and change volts and keeps the 12 volt battery topped up while you drive and makes it prepared for the next time you need to start the car and just like the more modern car when the car is turned off the voltage drops right back down to sit around 12 and change volts um, which is the required voltage to be able to start the truck now of course if we left it for many months or years the battery would slowly drain and not be sufficient to start the car or truck so that is the basics as you can see works on old cars new cars uh, basic battery functionality is something that a voltmeter well the, the voltage meter part of an, a multimeter can tell you pretty much across the board now again that doesn't tell you about the overall health of a battery you have to apply load to a battery to confirm um that it will function, uh, that it can actually charge the starter or, or run the starter. But still, confirming that uh, an alternator is putting out appropriate voltage, all of that uh, taken care of very easily. So if um, you like this video, please give it a like. If you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing. Until next time, this is Just Tool Basics.